Shalom and welcome to another weekly Bible studies. We continue to write and by the word of Yahweh as work. Now in the last study, I believe the last study we had, uh, we were looking in Galatians. Uh, we were in the fourth chapter uh, about uh, most preachers that preach that scripture, the fourth chapter about when Paul is talking about Galatians going back to their beggarly elements or going back to their gods that they worship. Uh, and then it, I think it's uh, 4, 8, or 9 there where he said, uh, you observe days and times and seasons. And so that's everybody's favorite verse for saying those are the holy days under the Old Testament, uh, the Sabbath, divine days. And that Paul was definitely saying to the Galatians that you're going back under the law because there's some Judaizers that was coming in and saying you need to keep these times and seasons. That's not that's not at all what Paul's talking about. But I have that video up. So you've got to think uh, if Paul is teaching that to the Galatians. Uh, he, he, everything he taught to the Galatians, he taught to the Ephesians or at Ephesus. Everything he taught there, he taught at Corinth. Everything he taught there is Thessalonica. All assemblies were set up the same way. He charged them all the same. Uh, and, and he even made statements at times, uh, I will put things in order when I get there. When they would be out of order, means order according to the instruction of the Torah. Now, uh, we know that uh, Paul did not teach circumcision to be saved. We know that Paul didn't teach any kind of uh, animal sacrifices or washings there. Uh, so, uh, but he did follow and guard and observe the divine days because in the divine days is all prophecy, people. Uh, that's the calendar that God created for his children. It's been handed down through the generations to generations. The Sabbath was a sign, holy uh, sign. It's also a covenant there. We read in the scriptures where that's a, the, the Sabbath that he made us covenant with his people. Uh, the seventh day, the Shabbat, and you were to keep it holy. And it's also a sign, fourth commandment a uh, oath or simeon in the Greek. And it's for, it's for generations after generations. So, very important to the, the, what we've got to do as a, as a body for people coming into these trees is you've got to realize the word karas in the Greek is, is synonymous with moed in Hebrew. Now, when Christ said, my time's at hand, he's talking about Passover. So Passover is, uh, was uh, a feast, a set-apart time that God commanded Israel to keep after coming out of Egypt uh, to celebrate that and to kill the lamb on the 14th day of the first month. And that's exactly Christ fulfilled that, people. But in fulfilling that is when he, uh, he begot his... First fruits and his kind of first fruits, through his blood we enter in and we're translated from darkness into the kingdom of the beloved Son. And that kingdom is in us, it's spiritual understanding. But uh, and all of the teaching is about that. So when Paul uses uh, these uh, Greek words, uh, uh, karas, uh, or and then it's translated in English or translated in time. You got to know what those uh, words mean. I was listening to a, a uh, Baptist preacher in uh, just here uh, a couple of days ago, and he was preaching on Second Timothy four two. Well, when I see when I see somebody, it's, they put up Second Timothy four two on the internet, and it's a new teaching. Okay, I'll click on it. It was this uh, Anderson guy. Has no idea what he's talking about. He's a real fast talker. Reads a lot of scripture. 
has no idea what he's talking about. Uh, but so he, he starts out with 2 Timothy 2 4, and that means to preach the Logos, the Word. Uh, be instant in season and out of season. Uh, you got to know that's not uh, spring, winter, summer, or fall, people. That word season. But yet he he goes through that and he says we got to be instant. Don't make any difference if it's 115 degrees outside. You got to get out there and witness. Or if it's in the dead of the winter, you got to get. That does not have anything. That does not mean that, people. Now all these people want to listen to this guy. And you listen to these tri preachers that tell you you're under the law if you follow Passover. You were born again as a believer on Passover. That's when you come in. That's when Paul reveals we come to be a new creature. When Christ died and shed his blood and that blood poured out on the ground, we were made from the dust of the ground, people. But, but the blood that we come through through Adam, seed, was tainted it was sinful we were under the original sin so uh, in the parable when it says in the fourth place uh and the seed fell on good ground that is that word is sperma that's his seed where christ's seed represents the water and the blood that that the plasma and the blood poured out when the soldier pierced the lord uh, and so that that's what reconciled as soon as that blood hit good ground and the spiritual sense by faith that we believe that we've been moved in to the Messiah's blood the blood baptism people and now now Paul says you, your old things pass away you become a new creature now we got to be taught by the rabbi not by preachers but what the Messiah said uh, he said, I've told you all things. And, and he sends the Holy Spirit. Once you, by faith in, in Christ, in, in that uh, preposition, you believe by faith in Christ, you the, the Spirit that we're baptized into, one Spirit, Paul says, reveals that uh, through the Word that we've been, we immediately go from a sinful Adam to a redeemed new creature. Immediately at, at the uh, uh, twinkling of an eye, instantly the Father, the sins are forgiven and we're placed in Christ at that time, which Paul reveals as a body. All members have been baptized into one spirit and under one blood covenant, that's the new covenant, no Jew, no Gentile, no free bond, no Greek, no woman, no man. One new creature, one new man. And that new man uh, takes place. Now that's why it will. It, this will not end until the fullness of the Gentiles come in because the preaching will go to all nations. And when that fullness comes in, then the last trump, last day, then the body of Christ, plus those that had a good report, all the ancient patriots that had a good report, uh, Hebrews 11, will be resurrected last day, the last trump. There will be no resurrection, no rapture, people. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring a video out as we get close to this, but I'm going I'm to sound the trumpet loud. There will be no rapture of the so-called church uh, September 23rd 2017 it is not going to happen not because I say it's not it's because these people do not understand the orderly arrangement of God through the Messiah when this will take place Passover is a time of life and season that's the new year as Rosh Hashanah the Feast of Trumpets that you will not find that as the head of the year in the scripture. That was brought in after Babylon. Now these Jews know that. There's people that know that. But no, there's a civil calendar and there's a religious calendar. There's only one calendar that's given to Moses and that's in Exodus 12. See when the beginning of the new month start. It does not start. It's not a civil. It's not, that's what man has done, just like the moon calendar people. Now, so I'm I am going on record as and not a, I'm not a prophet, 
But I will say, according to the scripture, that resurrection or the rapture resurrection uh, will not take place the 23rd day of the 2017. The two witnesses have got to stand up, people. That's why there's two witnesses before the Messiah ever comes. Yet all these people that follow the feast days and this guy that's putting all this out because he's got a vision and all this kind of stuff and all these people have been drawn to this, uh, yet he knows there's two witnesses that prophesy uh, that reveal the matter. So in the end, that's why you have two witnesses, Revelation, stand up three and a half years and they're killed by the beast. And then they stand up on their feet with a ruach and called up to a place and then the body and uh, the resurrection comes that afternoon after that. That's the last day just like Christ said. The resurrection or I will raise you at the last day. The first day of the seventh month, people, is not the last day on God's calendar. It's not the last day if you're, if you're following... Uh, the moon calendar. See, I mean, God, Christ said the last day. Now, these people say it. Now, even if they're using Rosh Hashanah as starting a civil, a civil year, and that's the head of the month, that's the first day of the month, or that sliver that nobody knows the day of theirs, what they say. So that's, but that's not the last day. If you see the sliver, then that's they say that starts the beginning of the first month. Not the end of the month, the beginning of the first month. So, uh, very adamant about that because there's so many people that's being deceived. And it's all idle, it's all, it's all hype. Uh, it's not, that's not, the sign's not even given in heaven for the body of the Messiah. We preach the resurrection in Christ, uh, crucified in the resurrection, the gospel. That's our sign to give to the nations and to the world, not to look for the sign. The Jews are the ones that seek the sign in heaven, not the nation that's bringing forth fruit during their season. We bring that, that has to do with the divine days and the, the gospel people. And here are all these people looking into heaven, a so called the body of church. That's not our sign, people. That's, uh, there will be a sign given to the Jews there. Okay, so. I just wanted to uh, show you that when Paul was talking, when I did the uh, teaching on Galatians, now we're going to look into Galatians, the sixth chapter. But before we do, I want to, you've got to come to understand this. I get a lot of feedback about, uh, well, you're going back under the law. No, what you don't understand, there's certain things in the law in Hebrews that's been changed uh, right now. In other words, they've been omitted for a time. But his holy days and his Sabbath was not contrary to us. Our sins and the ordinances and the elements and the traditions of men, the alakal in the first century of those Babylonian priests that Christ faced, that was contrary to the people under the uh, Moses' law. It was not the commandments or the holy days people. He didn't nail them to the cross. Now, I'm, I'm proving it to you. If you look at this word, Karas is synonymous with Moed. Moed and Karas means a set apart time, which are the feast of the Lord and the Sabbath. So you find this word in the Greek 80 something times in the Renewed Covenant, people. And Christ is telling you to pray at these times. Now, if they were nailed to the cross, now Christ is telling you to pray at something he nailed to the cross that puts us. Uh, under the letter of the law, that's incorrect, people. Uh, you've been taught falsely. Now, you can bow your neck and keep on throwing these verses out in Romans and Galatians. Well, I'm giving you Galatians. I can go to Romans or any of them because Paul taught the same thing to all of them. So, now I want to show you the very first time this, this word or a divine set-apart time, I want to show you uh, where it was the first time it was used in the New Testament. And then we're going to move to, uh, we're going to look at some of these and then I want to finish up with Galatians there. Uh, 
where you'll see that uh, Paul spoke of this in all of his teaching. There again, uh, this guy put up uh, uh, 2 Timothy 4.2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. In season is this word karas, people. It means uh, rebuke, exalt, or admonish on all divine days. All of the holy days. And it means to uh, witness, I'm witnessing to you, out of season, in opportune time. This is the first day of the uh, week here. We're in the last week of the fourth month, about ready to go into the first month. We just finished up uh, the Sabbath yesterday. Now this is, uh, well actually we're going in close to the second day of the week. So that's what that sea is, not winter, spring, summer, fall. You've got to come to understand that or you're going to be lost all the way through uh, Christ's teaching. So uh, now let's look at the first time it's used in the New Testament here. Uh, I've got, we're going to be looking at our, our study on Galatians 6, 9, and 10 here, but I want to go back real quick. I want to show you the first time this word cross is used uh, in the New Testament. I think you'll find this uh, 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 very interesting here. I'm going to go ahead and raise this up so you can see. Uh, now, right here, people, if you've got this program, uh, this word karas is found uh, in 81 verses in the New Testament. Now, now all your preachers, if they tell you it's been nailed the cross, are you telling me that this is found in uh, Matthew? And then it's found in Genesis, the first chapter, Matthew, the 11th, 8th chapter, right here, and it's found in the 22nd chapter of Revelation. It's all the way through from Genesis to Revelation. So uh, Christ speaks of this and Paul, uh, these divine days people were not nailed to the cross. You've got to start studying. Now Matthew 8, 29, And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, Yahshua? Now who is this? This is the devil's people. Uh, Let's, uh, let's just go back here real quick and look at the context where Christ is right here. Jesus heals two men with demons. And when he was come to the other side in the country of the uh, Gerasenes, this was in uh, 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 the northern part of, it used to be uh, the northern kingdom, uh, in other words, close to where he met the woman at the well, uh, there, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of their tombs exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, Now these devils, look who they cried out to. And behold, they cried out, these are spirits, devils, uh, in, in these men, they, inhabit, they was in these inhabited in these men, but these spirits cried out, uh, saying, "What have we to do with thee, Jesus?" Now, how did these uh, spirits, these unclean spirits, know who Jesus was? Because they knew Jesus, who he was, before the Word was made flesh, people. And they know because they were kicked out. Uh, they were removed from heaven uh, when Satan took a third of them with him. Uh, see, uh, so we see with thee, Yeshua, thou son of God, art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Okay, people, here it is. Uh, Right here is, is this word that nobody wants to look up and see what this word is. Uh, this is, this is uh, Geras. It means an occasion, a set proper time, opportunity, season. But it's not winter, spring, summer, and fall, which most people in this Baptist preacher was preaching the other night. If I, when he ever learns the truth of this, 
That's going to be one embarrassed uh, fellow because he's standing there with his shoulders back and his neck stiff and acting like he's leading people to the Messiah, getting them saved, and he's leading them in the ditch because he's blind and they're and the blind follow the blind and they both fall in the ditch. Okay, so right here, so we have the devils that know when they're going to be tormented. And Christ has come and, and now they know that His Spirit is the Spirit of God and, and they say, what have you come to torment us before this divine time comes, people. Now what now what in the world what in the world does this mean? See right here, if you understand, the devils know when they're going to be cast into the lake of fire, people. They know when they're going to be cast in. They know what God's word says. See. So well, Jesus, what are you doing here? Are you going to are you going to start Torment me early? Now, every time he cast these devils out, he allowed them to go into the swine or the pigs or go in or... And he said, go. Because he's not going to break his order, his logos, his word. Every, everything has to be filled according to the word that was made flesh. And he is the word the truth and the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through Him. But the point you've got to understand is uh, as these devils knew. So that's why they said what they did. If, if, if He wanted to, but they know that God has got a correct order. And they're now wondering, Jesus, what are you doing here? Are you fixing to torment us before the time that comes when they'll be cast in the lake of fire. And so that's why they Christ cast them out. But they weren't cast it out. He didn't throw them in the lake of fire. They went on, he cast them out of them people. Now they will be cast out in the lake of fire when he comes back, the spirits of devils. And that's why the beast and the false prophet are going into the uh, lake of fire. Satan won't go into after a uh, thousand years reign. So isn't that amazing, people? They knew, and we need to know what's being said here. See, this is not, if you come here to torment us, well, it's, uh, it's the first day of the week, uh, or this is the Sabbath. Well, that's the, no. They know this that Christ has got to do the will of the Father, and, but are you, it look, looks like you're going to torment us and See, they knew. So I hope you understand that now. Okay, so that's why they were allowed uh, to go their own way. Notice right here, he says, and there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine. Now what did Christ say? So the devils besought him, saying, if thou cast us out, allow us to go away in the herd of swine. That's an unclean animal. And that's unclean to God. And he said to them, go. Notice now, people, this is, uh, he, he said to them, go. That means to lead oneself under a withdrawal, retire, sinking out of sight, depart. But this is not, this is not uh, them can't, the torments. You don't see any torment here, do you? And they said, if you come to torment us, now when you go, when they're cast, cast in the lake of fire, They'll be tormented day and night for the ages. See, that's the same word. Uh, 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 it's bison, I think, is the word torment. Uh, but he said to them, "Go," because it was not. It's not the divine time for them to be tormented yet. But they will be, and it's getting very close. All right. So now, so this is the first time out of eighty-six matches, eighty-one verses. So you need to do a study on this, people. Uh, you know, uh, you can go down through here. Uh, notice, uh, let's look at 12.1. Uh, now, at that time, here's this word, people. At that time is 
is the word karash. It's the same time the devil said at that time. Now, what time is it? Now, why, would it, why is it saying in that means the self same day, a prefix, it's the same, or at that time. So, at that time, Yeshua went on the Sabbath day through the corn. So, notice, let me do this. The Sabbath is a Karash time. It's a set-apart time. Uh, so, the time is, the, the set-apart time that uh, the, the scriptures being wrote about here is the Shabbat. Now, right here, if, was, if this was in the Hebrew, this right here would be wrote Moed. Right here. So this is Greek. So, the Moed would have been the Shabbat. The cross time is the Shabbat, people. Now, all these preachers are saying that the Shabbat was nailed to the cross that's in Moses' law. No, it was not nailed to the cross. It is a perpetual covenant for those that believe in God and, and Yeshua. Now, we're not in uh, Israel or Jerusalem, and we're not going to be sacrificing on this day, but you should be sitting this day apart and fellowshipping with like-minded people and trading the scriptures with one another until the Lord comes. See? So I'm just showing you now. Uh, this is very important. So uh, you go down through there and you check every one of them. And when you get to Paul's teaching, now right here, now people, what are you going to do with this? And all these people, uh, here's a starting point. These people come up and say, well, nobody knows the day or the hour. Well, he says, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time, right here, in the time, that's the same word. Uh, that's the same word we're talking about here. So in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, uh, gather ye first the tares, bind them and bun them, and then gather the wheat into my barn. See? Now, so right here, so now, the harvest, now you're going to learn that he, if you follow this, he's going to say the harvest is at the end of the age. See? The, the age is going to come to an end, and then we're going to start another age, or another, uh, that's going to be a jubilee year of the millennium, the seventh day, when Christ gets here to rule and reign. So, so the harvest is at the end of the age. The end of the age, of, or end of that year of the age, that's the last day, people. It's not the first day of the seventh month. You, if you want to believe what Jesus said, he says it four times in John 6, if you're doing the will of the Father and you believe, you have eternal life and I will raise you up at the last day, at the last day. Four times. You're not going to, no way, can, nobody can work out the first day of the seventh month being the last day of the year or the last day of the age. See, it's impossible. Why don't people listen to what their master says? See, they worship him, they say, they sing about him, uh, they do all these things, but they do not do, he says, why you call me master, master, do not want to say. Now they're out there teaching and bringing millions of people to follow all this stuff. And after it, the 24th of this guy, he, it could cause some major mental problems. Now he might get up on the 24th and say, I'm wrong, let's go back to the table. But as much as he's been ooed and God and uh, kind of followed and people interviewing and then you got all these other people coming on and coming on and coming on and now you're having conferences and you got the blood, uh, the uh, eclipse is coming 30 days before and he talks about a nine month birth, uh, uh, you know, it's nine months uh, when the king, uh, Jupiter, comes in to go into the woman's womb. Uh, 
I'm going to say this. I'm fixing to put this up, Lord willing. Christ said, you must be born of the water and the blood or the water and the spirit. Uh, I've showed you that living water that he says comes out of our bellies once we've been moved into his blood is actually blood and water. That's the living water. See, that's his sperma, his uh, seed uh, that we become his seed, Christ's seed, and that's why we're his offspring. Uh, see, now, now what's amazing is, people, this guy is talking about a nine-month birth. And that's when King Jupiter comes in and it takes the heavens up there and it's perfectly nine months and then the church is born, okay? Uh, Christ said, Nicodemus, you must be born of the water and the spirit. Okay. Nicodemus said, how do I come back through my mother's womb? That's a nine-month birth. The same thing he's showing in the heavens, people. Now, Christ said, no, you don't understand. You've got to be born of the water and the spirit. That was that blood baptism. When that blood poured out on that ground, and by faith you believe, you've been, you, God moves you immediately into a new birth, new creature in Christ, a new man, and a in, in the twinkling of an eye, just like we're going to be changed, that's how your birth, that's when your birth come into being in Yeshua, in you and you and him. Greater is he that's in you and you that's in him. Now this guy's went out here and made all this stuff up about conception and we're still in the womb and we hadn't come out and it's so ridiculous but it's because he don't even know who he is in Messiah. No, no, I'm dead. But I am, I am proving you by the Messiah's words. See, we're born instantly through by faith in Messiah. The Father moves us from darkness into the kingdom of His Son. And then we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Now you've got to be trained up as a little child. And uh, that's where we now, as a little child, are trained up in the truth as the Holy Spirit leads and guides us as we grow up in Christ, being conformed to His image. You see, not in some womb that's not coming out until the rapture or the resurrection and He thinks He's got this great antipathy. Well, see, there again, it's not He's using those heavens as the star moves in for nine months and that's like us giving, well, when Christ, we're moved immediately in the, in the king and the son's uh, kingdom. And now we receive or sealed by the Holy Spirit. And now, as Paul says, put away childish things and become as a man. That's not in some womb or something that this guy's all, uh, this is, uh, well, all I'm, I'm saying, everything's in the scripture, but when these people convolute and think they've got some kind of vision or dream and they're not checking the scripture uh, it looks good, sounds good but it's not the truth people. okay so now uh, so I'm showing you here the harvest end, the age end, the time it's until like, we're going to be resurrected last time, at the last day people uh, right here uh, now let's look in Matthew 16.3 now we're going to move on to Galatians real quick Matthew 16.3 now, now, now notice uh, here comes Judah and the Sadducees the Pharisees and they come tempting Christ would you show them a sign an oath a sign where out of heaven Right here. They seek a sign from heaven, people. But Christ said the only sign be given you, sign of Jonah. The belly of the fish three days and three nights, so he'll be in the belly of the earth three days and three nights. That's the only sign he give them. Now he's going to give them the heavenly sign. We're going to get into that. And uh, I do know now what that sign is. Uh, and I am going to put that up. That's another thing. I've got to put up a teaching on the shortening of the days. And that heavenly sign, I've got lots of stuff for people. I just got, got to it yet. Okay, so here comes uh, 
them tempting Christ want to sign from heaven. Now notice what he says here about the, you look at the sky and you can tell if it's going to be a bad day the next day. Uh, but he says, you bunch of hypocrites, you can discern, discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern. Now this is not saying you should be able to. They can't. They, uh, God has already fitted down people. These are vessels of wrath that's already fitted. That's why Christ said, uh, I'll destroy this temple and raise it again in three days. And then he told them on uh, Matthew, on the Olive Discourse, that this won't be one rock uh, standing. In 70 AD, there wasn't. So, so this is already set. So right here, he's not saying you should have. He's saying you cannot discern now the signs of the times because they've been so disobedient with the stewardship that God's fixing to punish them. But notice, people, here we are. This comes from Genesis 1.14. If you're in the Septuagint, it's Simeon. If you got the Septuagint in Genesis 1.14, Moed is Karas. The Septuagint uses the same Greek words as Christ used right here. Christ, Christ spoke in Greek right here, and these, these were created the signs of the times, days, and years, Genesis 1.14. Isn't that amazing? Now here's this, and here's Christ teaching this. Okay, now, I'm going to go to one more right here. And and uh, if, you, if you get a hold of what Christ said right here, uh, this right here completely destroys uh, what preachers say that all oh, this has been nailed to the cross. They're all in error. And when you see what the Messiah told or says right here, uh, he's talking to these Pharisees, and he's prophesying to them, and there, and he even prophesies right here, people. He says, uh, "But when they, the husband, and that's who the husband of the vineyard, Israel, uh, Judah, there is that's who Christ is referring to. But when the husband saw the son, he's talking about himself." They said among themselves, in their heart, Christ is saying exactly what they did, what they're going to do to it. They said among themselves, this is the heir. Here is the Son of God. This is the heir. Come, let us worship him. No, people. They was covetous and jealous, and they wanted his inheritance. They said, come, let us kill the lamb. And they did. The Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Let us kill him, Yahshua, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sins. Now, they didn't know that that would uh, start the new creation, people. That in his blood would start the new creation. If they had, Paul said, they would have never crucified him. They didn't know that. See? So let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. Matthew 21, 40, And the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh. Christ is asking them a personal question. What will he do unto these husbands that killed the heir, the king of Judah? What will they do? What will God, the creator, what will he do with these guys? Now out of their own mouth, they prophesied their judgment. Isn't this amazing? Out of their own mouth, now you remember, people, uh, when Christ says, <clears throat> it's not what goes in your mouth or goes in you and comes out that defiles a man. It, it's what comes out of your mouth. See? Now, that's, that's, I'm not getting into the unclean meats and stuff, but what I'm saying is, uh, that hadn't changed either because when a man says we can eat any kind of meat we want to, and God made these meats for for clean eat, to, for good for you, so to speak, and these bad, and God don't change, well, He didn't change. But see, when a man when a man says that God has changed that, and out of His mouth He says you can eat anything and pray for it over by Thanksgiving is that's what defiled Him. That come out of His mouth. He's not talking about He's talking about what goes in Him. But see, they come what comes out of the mouth if it's against God's word, it's going to defile you spiritually. So right here, Christ said to them, what's, what are they going to do? What, what, what is the Creator going to do 
because you've killed uh, the heir, the son of God. Now, what is he going to do with these men that do that? See, well, see what what comes out of their mouth, and they're pro this, and it's true. They, I mean, it's going to prophesy to them. It's going to. He's going to say, see, if in other words, they don't see it's them. They think it's somebody else, and so they're going to speak this. And that's why Christ called them a bunch of hypocrites, because they say this and then do this. Okay, watch what they said here. They say unto Christ, he, he will miserably destroy those wicked men that slew the heir and will now lend out. Now this word lend out means to lease, not forever. It's a period of time. And they will lend out his vineyard. Vineyard represents a... Uh, uh, the the vineyard represents Israel or the uh, the uh, uh, the vineyard or what's being worked in is God's uh, house his vineyard see and he will lend it out to other husbands I wonder who these people are which notice people what what the scripture says which shall render him the fruits. Remember, a good tree brings forth good fruit. A bad tree can't bring forth good fruit. Uh, a good tree can't bring forth bad fruit. Christ gives you that. That's all the way back in Genesis uh, in the creation week in day three. Okay, right here is uh, which shall render him, the creator, the fruits in their seasons. What in the world? Is this winter, spring, summer, and fall? Is that... Uh, oh, uh, the Baptist preacher, old Steve Anderson, said, "Well, Steve, uh, you need to repent, man. Bad. Uh, you need to repent and and get on God's uh, divine days immediately, uh, or you're going to be called as a thief, man. Right here. Uh, I'm going to change this to uh, pink or whatever that color is. So." In their seasons. These are the divine days. Baby. We're supposed to be bringing forth fruits on the Sabbath. Passover. Unleavened bread. And see why Passover. Because that's the starting time of life. That's when as a believer in Messiah. That's when you come into being part of his body. By faith and belief in Christ. At that time when he died for you. 14th day of the first month, Passover, that's the gospel, people. That's the good news. See, that redeemed us from our sins, and we become a new creature. Look, it doesn't make any difference if, you're, if you, if you uh, become a believer in Christ any other time of the year. But when Paul tells you in Colossians and Ephesians, redeem the time. That word time in, in, in singular, it's in reference to Passover. Because that's when you come into being. That's when the body is birthed. Now, you can come into being anytime during the year because we preach the logos in season and out of season. So you become his offspring if you believe by faith, but it's, it's the gospel, it's the same gospel, the circularity of the feast days, and that's why it's relevant that you understand and follow, because that's how you, that's when you come into being a new man, new creature, in Christ is when he poured out his blood, not poured out his blood on the cross, but what day was that? That day, what day was it? What day is he going to drink the new wine with us? It's not going to be a cross that day. He's not going to be hanging on a cross that day, but what day did he say he would drink the new wine? The same day that he hung on the cross. Future Passover, but not as a suffering Messiah, as a ruling king. And we're all going to be glorified bodies because we're all resurrected at the last day, and then 14 days later, we, could, we arrive in Jerusalem at the Mount of Olives with, with the first fruits, the 12 tribes, the body, and all those have a good report. And he's going to sit down and the wines are going to drip down new wine. I told you, Joel, the 2 or 318, 
We read this scripture the other day, and we're all going to drink wine. Now, if you've never, if you've, if you've been doing communion all these other times, first day of the week, once a week, once a quarter, and do that in often remembrance of his death, when did he die? Did he die on the first day of the week? No, people, he died on the third day of the week when he'd be lifted up. Three in the Hebrew means to be lifted up, divine purpose. He died on the third day of the week, the 14th day of the first month. You, got, you need to go, that should be imprinted in your mind. That's part of the gospel, people. All right, real quick, uh, as I continue here, I'm, I'm getting excited because this is the good news. It wasn't just any old day, people. So Christ is telling you right here, now look on the next one uh, when he says, uh, he says uh, uh, right here in Matthew 21, uh, uh, 21 40 to, uh, 41 now watch what Christ says did you never read the scriptures of stone which the builders rejected the same is coming to being the head of the corner this is a, a Lord's doing it's marvelous in our eyes notice therefore I say unto you Christ saying the kingdom of God shall be taken from you Judah and given to a spiritual nation right here the ethnox a spiritual nation bringing forth their fruits people when? Bringing forth the fruits thereof. When do they bring forth the fruits thereof? Right here. Christ is in the same. They bring forth the fruits in their seasons, in the divine times. Now, this is what Jesus Christ said. You're going to listen to your preacher, and, and, and you're going to, your preacher is going to step in. Christ is uh, teaching, and, all, and, and he is a uh, as your uh, mediator, he's fixing to uh, uh, table Christ's teaching, and now you're going to follow this other teaching? God forbid. Okay, all right, now, I'm running out of time. There's so much here. You need to go through these things. Uh, uh, look at all these times he's, uh, this word is used. Uh, so, now, let's get down, let's get into... Uh, just to show you, you think that, uh, look how many times it's used that Christ used it. Well, let's, let's start here real quick. Uh, and Paul come on the scene about uh, right in there. This is Stephen. Uh, so about 12, 13, in, thir in uh, Acts 13, you find it right here. Uh, uh, in Acts 13, uh, you find it Acts 14, 17, Acts 17, 26, 19, 23, 24, 25, uh, uh, Romans, this is Paul, Romans 3, uh, 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 3, 26, Romans 5, 6, uh, see right here, when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And do, what's this due time mean? That, the, and do Passover. The, the, when, the, when the right Passover come, in the fullness of times, Christ died for us on this due time. That's Passover, people. That's a divine day, set apart day. We know that because of Leviticus 23. Uh, and also uh, Exodus 12, lots of places there. We know that when Moses uh, led the children of Egypt out of uh, uh, children of Israel out of Egypt on the 14th day, I mean uh, on Passover, yeah, 14th day of the first month. Romans 8, 1, I reckon that the sufferings of this uh, present time are not worthy. Uh, for this, the word of promise at this time, now notice, look at, now let's look at this here. Now, just to prove to you uh, what this time means Paul used it this way at this word of promise uh, at this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son now notice people you go back to Genesis the 18th chapter and the angels come to Abraham with a word of promise and said one year from this time at the appointed time time of life uh, you're going to have a son you're going to call him Isaac Paul brings it up right here, people. Right here. Look at this. 
All right, here's uh, here's that word uh, cross again that Paul is using. Uh, okay, I'm going to put it in yellow. Right here it is. So Paul is going all the way back to Genesis 18 and confirmed with the Tanakh or the, uh, uh, the Torah. And Paul is quoting it right here. He's using the Greek word instead of Moed. Isn't that amazing? Okay, and we see Romans 11, 5. Uh, Romans 11, uh, 3. Uh, see, now notice right here he says, and at knowing the time that now is high time to awake and come out of your sleep and knowing that the crucifixion when Christ died, now this was what, 30 years or so after Christ died on the tree on the 14th day, and Paul is teaching, that's why he said, I teach nothing but Christ and Him crucified. But what time, this is not, the time is the day he was crucified, people. Uh, the time is because it's paramount, because that's what's, what God created these signs and times in Genesis 1.14 for us to observe. And for these are the, the mysteries that, that's been hidden as the sun fulfills these divine days. Okay, here's a, uh, and he says, Therefore judge nothing before the time. When the Lord comes, he's been given all judgment over heaven, earth, and beneath. All right. Uh, then he, uh, as we go all, as you see, look how many times Paul used, just and even in one verse, people. Yet you're saying that Paul said that he nailed the Passover to the cross and he nailed the Sabbath. Look how many times Paul uses this divine word, people. All right, now, <clears throat> this is where I want to get to. I'm going to close with this uh, teaching here. All right. So, let's look at uh, Galatians 6, 8. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now remember, when Christ said four times in John 6, all those that do the will of the Father, uh, uh, he will raise up at the last time. So if, you, if we believe, we've, we're given uh, through Christ in his blood, we have the living water. Ever, this is the living water here. He told the woman to well, if you drink of uh, this water uh, that I give you, you won't thirst again. This is the living water here he's talking about. So uh, if you sow to the Spirit, you reap everlasting life. That's what I'm speaking to you now, the Spirit. So you will reap because, because the seed's in you and you've been moved into that through belief. The Father places us out of darkness immediately. It's not a nine-month pregnancy, people. It's it's in a blink of an eye. Your sins have been forgiven. Okay, uh, Galatians six nine. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now look, it's, it's just I mean it's the same thing when he when he's told the Galatians. In the fourth chapter, when all the preachers say, you Galatians, by you Judaizers preaching, you're taking you back under uh, observing the times and the signs, the Sabbaths and stuff. Well, here is the same, this is the same word right here, people. Uh, exactly the, uh, uh, the same word I've been talking about. So Paul is saying, did he tell this to cross? Don't be well, uh, don't be wearing well doing for in due season. So, you mean he nailed the Sabbath and and Passover and all this to cross because we teach this because this is when we were born again, starting in Passover. Have you ever wondered why? If if that's it's so unbelievable what the Lord has done, the Creator. This was all before the foundation of the world, people. Uh, he, he knew us according to us in him from the foundation of the world. And that's in the third uh, day of creation. I'll, I've got a teaching on doing that uh, to take us all the way back, even before the calendar. 
So, I mean, started on the fourth day. Well, we're going to see something amazing on the third day. I can't get into that right now. But the point I'm saying is, so Paul is telling you uh, to keep straight ahead. Keep preaching in season, out of season. Uh, teach the truth. Uh, bring people to the knowledge of the truth. And as they come out of Babylon and come in to the body, then they understand by the teaching that they have been born as a new creature, a new person, and now they are part of the body being baptized in the same one spirit we're all baptized in. And so because, see, why? Because, see, he's been bringing in his offspring nearly for 2,000 years for those that, by faith in Christ and belief, the Father's moved us into his blood, which is divine, which is uncorruptible, uh, which starts the new creation uh, there again, the heavenly creation as, as his offspring people. So that's why we're all members of the same body, through one spirit, people. This is, And he's head over it. Why? Because it's his blood that we enter. Anytime anybody tries to get saved or whatever, sinner's prayer, all this other stuff, you're going up. Uh, and, and, and Christ says anybody that tries to enter into the door, I'm the door, into the sheepfold, you going up another way is nothing but uh, robbers and thieves. That's what the Messiah said, people. I'm going to say what he says. So, uh, and so there's only one straight gate and narrow way that we enter in and few there that find it. It's through his blood on that divine day, that divine day created that Christ fulfilled as a sinless uh, human, word made flesh, Lamb of God that takes away the sins, and then that's when we're birthed on that divine day. And that's been nailed to the cross. Man, man. All I can say, people, is for if you're coming in to understand this, repent and Christ will receive you and follow Him because that's when He birthed you if you believe. That who he is and why he came and he's coming back and we're going to drink wine with him new new wine in that day Passover future tense so let us not be well aware in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not now this now due season people this is in the future active voice See, if, if we stay and we're all committed and stay with uh, when you come to this knowledge and endure to the end, then you're going to be delivered. And if we faint not, if we don't pull back, the body of Christ will, uh, uh, the body will be reaped if we faint not. It's not talking about uh, uh, we bring forth fruits, spiritual gifts and fruits now. But we're talking about what's going to be reaped at harvest time. Uh, you don't want to be found naked. You want to uh, be clothed with that heavenly clothing. We've been promised uh, a spiritual body, the same body Christ has. So this due season is the season uh, that we're all going to sit down after the resurrection and drink wine with him. This is in the future. When Paul's teaching this, this is future active. It's still future active, people. That's what I mean. The, now, as we have therefore opportunity, okay. Now, now as we have not in due season, but we have opportunity. This word uh, is also used as opportunity in the text and the context here. Why? Because right now, people, we have opportunity to let us do good unto all. That's anybody outside like it, we hear this message. I'm doing good to them by bringing this message to them. But also it's a message of those that already uh, uh, understand who they are in Christ. Have already been out of darkness and already entered into the Christ, the Son's kingdom in Him. And, and them in Him and Him in us. So, but now... Let us therefore, uh, as we have therefore opportunity, well right now, people, what is Paul meaning? Right now, I have opportunity 
in season and out of season to preach the Logos. That's what I'm doing right now. See, in due season, if we faint not, uh, the fruit will, the harvest uh, will be, uh, Christ will uh, send the angels to harvest his uh, offspring. That means the resurrection and glorified bodies, people. That's going to come future active if we faint not. We got to keep enduring this. We got to keep putting this message out, and no matter what's coming. As this Antichrist stands up and the world turns from this to this guy, we got you got to stand in Christ and know who you are in Christ. And in due season, if we faint not, it will come to pass. But right now, as we have opportunity, right now we're having opportunity to keep preaching this message for those that will come into the body and believe and understand what, who they are in Christ and who Christ is in them and then being trained and taught following the divine days and redeeming Passover because that's when we become a new creature. So very, very important is what Paul's talking about. And especially to those that's already the household of faith that believes. So See you how large a letter I've written unto you with my own hand. As many as you've been circumcised, only least uh, they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. See, what Paul, what this problem was, people, was uh, literal circumcision. Not, but circumcision is, is, was, a, was given to Abraham as a righteous act, but Abraham believed before uh, he was commanded by God to circumcise all the kids. Or, and him and Ishmael. Uh, but what you've got to understand here, Paul was having a problem because some of the Judaizers were saying you've got to be circumcised for salvation. It, it, what, the Judaizers were not knocking, the circumcision was the eighth day after you were born, people. It could fall on any time. Uh, so that's not, that's uh, circumcision. It's not a divine day. That was a covenant, but it wasn't, it's not a created divine day. It was a righteous act that God commanded Abraham to do after he believed. So this had, this is not have anything to do with the divine days. This has to do with circumcision. For neither they themselves who are circumcised. Now notice what Paul's telling you here. The Judaizers that were circumcised, Paul tells you they didn't keep the Torah. They had their own lock on people. See, they didn't even follow uh, the Torah. They was not obedient to the Torah. But notice, but desire to have you circumcised uh, that they may glory in your flesh. <clears throat> they may glory in, uh, in you being obedient to them. In other words, you, you've been circumcised, and so they're glorying about it. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our, except in the cross, that's when we were born, uh, the, through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, through whom dia the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Okay, now a new creature. A new, this is the same word as new covenant that he, that he, when he drank the, uh, said, drank this, this is the shed blood of the New Testament. The blood is the New Testament, and this is living water. He said, drank this, and this is actually means drink in spirit and truth. All right, now, but now you're a new creature. When did you become a new creature? When, when Christ died on the cross and the blood and the water poured out. Now this is, as we close here, people, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy upon the Israel of God. He causes us to Israel of God. From henceforth, let no more trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Now, if, when Paul says right here, any, as many as walk according to this rule, notice this word, peace be upon, that's epi, that actually means uh, 
Uh, it's a primary uh, preposition. It's a su super in preposition, in position, time, place, or order. So peace be upon them and mercy and, and, uh, and upon them and the God of Israel is what Paul's talked about. Now, I'm going to go back real quick to Ephesians, real quick, to tie that peace in. Peace be on you, okay. Let me go back to uh, Ephesians, the second chapter, Ephesians 2, and we'll see right here, when you come into being right here is, um, now here's this word time, Paul uses that at that time, there's an, he uses it more than anybody in the, in the New Testament people, in his 13 books. But now, in Christ Jesus, who was sometimes were far off, now you come into being, get am I, are made, you come into being nigh in the blood, in, by, the better translation here is uh, this translation. Now in Christ Jesus, ye that once far off are made, come into being nigh in, right here people, in the blood. By is not a good translation. Uh, if you know by means in, in the blood. Okay. Now, notice what he says here. That's when we become a new creature. Remember what we just left from? Paul is telling you, you come into being in the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. There it is right there, people. We just left that. He is our peace. Has made both one, made both one man now, one, not Jew or Gentile, and has broken down uh, the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity the law of commandments contained in himself between one new man, new covenant, blood covenant man, uh, so making peace through his blood. It tore down the wall. Now, this right here, that's why he said, "My in my blood is the new covenant. So in the new covenant is the new man. If you believed, you have come into being in his blood when he said and that's why people that this gospel has to be preached as a witness to the nations and then the end will come not the end of the world the end of the age the fullness of the Gentiles so I hope this will spiritually awaken those those that are coming to see who they are but there is you cannot people no matter We've all been involved in these other uh, beliefs and denominations and sects. I was in them for 40 something years, people. So uh, we've all been in that boat, but the Lord said, uh, John reveals there in 18th chapter of Revelation, come out of her, my people. Come out of Babylon. Babylon is a confusion, not only of languages, confusion of uh, Religions. It's a confusion of the truth. It convolutes the truth. So uh, hopefully that this uh, spirit is waking your spirit up to see who you are in Christ, when you were made alive in Christ, when you come part of the body, when you come part of the new man or the new creature, and now we're we're being created, and this is running. We're running out of time, people because his body is still being created through his blood that he shed at Calvary or on the cross 2,000 years ago on Passover. On Passover, 14th day of the first month on the third day of that week. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may the Spirit, what is your spirit? So we've traded these unbelievable scriptures for one another. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and soon coming King. Amen.